In this video, I wanna share a personal story with you about what happened to me when I didn't take my gaining weight and my health going down seriously. I wanna sh paint a picture for you and tell you how bad it can get if you don't start loving yourself and taking care of your body and knowing that you're worth it to change. At my heaviest, 275 pounds, I was having these weird experiences where it felt like, like a nightmare when you're watching a horror movie and you watch somebody get jerked out of sleep and they're gasping for air. I would be restlessly sleeping and then all of a sudden it would feel like I was being yanked out of sleep as if you were being held underwater and you had been holding your breath for so long and your lungs had no air and I would wake up and I would go <gasps> every morning all night long this was happening to me where I would be jerked out of bed and I would have this feeling like my lungs were going to explode because I had no air and I really I knew something was wrong but I didn't know what it was there would also be times where Kyle my husband behind the camera would be you know doing those where pushing me in my sleep going Nicole Nicole wake up you're not breathing in your sleep something's wrong you're not breathing so Nicole for years like she would snore but near near the end there it was more than snoring it was snoring and then a stop a full stop where i would be listening for a breath and i didn't hear anything and that's what scared me and i would have to wake her up that must have been really scary for you and and also what was going on during this time like i would be stopping breathing and gasping for air in my sleep during the day i felt exhaustion like i had never felt before um I remember being at work and I was holding the door open for someone. I fell asleep holding the door open. And I remember being so scared, like I was afraid, like, am I, can I even function? I would be falling asleep doing little things. I actually started seeing if I had narcolepsy because I was falling asleep all of the time, standing up, sitting down in the car, no matter what I was doing, I could be having a conversation and I'd be out. And I used to think Nicole was rude because every time she would even sit down or lay down, we would be talking and I'd look over and she was asleep. And I would be like, wow, that's, that's not a very nice way to end a conversation. And, am, am I boring or something? <laughs> and I remember feeling so bad and so guilty for always needing the sleep. And I never felt refreshed. And also at this time, after gasping for air like that all night, my body must have been trying to help me get air because I would wake up and my mouth would be wide open and it would be really dry and I would have all this weird stuff in my chest, this phlegm, and I would spend at least 15 minutes a day coughing up all of this phlegm, green. This is gonna get gross, so if you don't like gross, stop now. But if you need a bit of a wake up call, keep listening. I remember that I was so worried about what it was that I actually put it in a bag and brought it to the doctor. And at the time they were just like, I don't know what's wrong with you lady, like just go home. You know, like they didn't know, they couldn't tell me. It wasn't until I started listening to somebody that I worked with telling me about sleep apnea and what their symptoms were like and that they had a sleep apnea machine that I realized I think that's me. And this woman, she was struggling with her weight. She was obese and so was I. And I thought, this has gotta be it. So I looked into it and I, I called a sleep study place around here and I booked one. And I was really like nervous and ashamed. You have to go to this place and they hook you up to all these wires and they monitor your sleeping all night while you're hooked up and you're sleeping in a weird bed in a weird room in a weird place in the middle of a weird city and you do it all night long i was so scared to do it but i knew so you know i i got ready i, d I did all the preparations you're supposed to do and kyle dropped me off and i remember walking in feeling so ashamed like my weight is bringing me to this place 
where I have to sleep hooked up to all these things to see if my weight and me causing that is the reason why I might need a machine to sleep and breathe at night. So when you when you're going into sleep studies or when I was going to the doctor to get checkups, you know the hospital gowns that they always give you when you're getting exams? Well, I was so heavy that they would give me two gowns without even asking. They'd just be like, here you go, here's one for your front, here's one for your back. And I used to go, in my head, I'd be like, why are they giving me two gowns? And then I'd put one on and realize one is not gonna close. One came here. The opening to close it was here. I had to put one in the front and one in the back and neither of them did up. And then I, I go to this thing and they, they're like, they, they have to take like this scrapey thing and they scrape your scalp so that they can put the glue that will stick the wires and you're wired all over, all over your body of these weird wires and you have these little things hooked up to monitor like your blood pressure and your, your heartbeats and your breathing and then you see all these people dressed in like scrubs and they've, they're monitoring these computers of all these people and I remember I was the biggest one there and all these people are getting, you know, all these wires to go for their sleep study. And I remember feeling so embarrassed that I was the biggest person there. And I was there because my binge eating was causing my weight gain that was stopping me breathing at night. And it was the worst sleep. It was so weird. You're hooked up. These people will come in and check on you. And you're in this weird room that looks like a hotel room, but you're all like hooked up to these wires, you got all this glue in your hair. I remember feeling so ashamed that I had brought myself to that point. I got the sleep study, you wake up at like six in the morning, they take it all off of you and you have no clue, you have to wait for the results. So you've done all this traumatic experience, you haven't slept because you had all this crap all over you and then like, okay, you'll get the results in a bit. So you have to go back home and not breathe all night when you're sleeping and not know do I have this? Do I not? Did I stop breathing? Like, am I making this up? You know, you think you're crazy sometimes. You're like, this, this can't be true. I can't be stopping breathing. So I get the results. I have to go to this place in the middle of the city and they sit me down and they say, Nicole, you have sleep apnea. And they said, I was stopping breathing completely seven times a night. My body my brain was shutting down because I was stopping breathing, was how they explained it. You're, you're not getting any oxygen to your brain. You're stopping breathing seven times a night and partially stopping breathing 84 times a night. 84 times my body was partially stopping breathing because of my weight, because of what I did to my body, because I was binge eating, I was using food to cope, I couldn't stop, I was hurting my body. So they put me on the machine and what happens is they give you a diagnosis, but you don't get the machine that day. No, you do the sleep study, then you have to get the diagnosis, then you have to wait again, go back home and stop breathing all night, and then you go get fitted for your machine. So then you're walking in, you're getting fitted with this mask on your face that's gonna help you breathe at night. I remember sitting in there and again, I was so ashamed and so embarrassed that my, eating disorder, my emotional eating, my out of control eating had brought me to that point where I needed a machine to breathe at night. And I was so embarrassed. And again, I was the biggest one there. And I went in and the girl was fitting me with the mask and showing me about the machine. And I remember saying desperately to her, like, is it just if you're heavy that you need, that you get sleep apnea? And I remember her looking at me with compassion and saying, Majority of people, yes, but some people who are fit have it as well. And it's just something like, sometimes they have like a deviated septum or something that stops them. So it's not, <laughs> there's a lot of circus going on. It's not just heavy people that have it, but it is a lot of heavy people. And I remember then saying, does that mean if I lose weight that I can not have the machine? And she looked at me and she said, it's a possibility, but it, it's not, it might not be. You can lose weight and see if it helps, but it might not. You might have to be on this machine forever. And I remember after that, like I was ashamed and I did keep engaging and binging for a while, but 
that day after she said that there was like a spark in me that said I might not be ready yet but I I'm gonna go down trying to get off of this machine and the one thing that I did after that appointment was I, I still like I said engaged in binge eating and I remember I would be binging and then I would go to bed and I would have to put the machine on so that I could breathe when I was sleeping and I remember that shame that came in going why why can't I stop why am I doing this to myself do I really hate myself that much that I'll keep doing this and needing a machine and that finally motivated me to take control of my health and my life to take the control back from food I made the decision that day to stop letting food control me and to start eating what I liked in portion because numbers were too overwhelming at that point. I started portioning my food by using the labels on the backs of food packages and using scale, food scales and measuring cups and spoons. And I decided to do portion control with moving my body as much as I could. And being that heavy, I couldn't move very much. So I walked for about 15 minutes a day. And my husband, Kyle, who has also lost 130 pounds with me and kept it off for six years, just like me, he did the same thing. And around and the same time, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So that was like my real kick motivator to get moving. And when we made those decisions to eat what we like in portion and move our bodies, it led to us losing that weight and keeping it off. Kyle has reversed that type two diabetes diagnosis and I have reversed sleep apnea and been medically cleared. I went back to a sleep study, I went back to the results guy and he said, you have cleared yourself from sleep apnea and you don't need a machine. No more diet. CPAP. No more CPAP and I have been machine free at night no CPAP machine for the six years that I've kept the weight off there is hope guys but you got to get serious we have to give you tough love because we are working on saving lives here I had to save my life by eating less and moving my body my binge eating was out of control and it was taking me down and if you are out there and you don't have time like I didn't have time and Kyle didn't have time we are here to save you with tough love at some point you have to wake up look at yourself and stop with the excuses and this is why we're here we're gonna give you compassion but we're also gonna give you tough love we are not playing around this is not a game there's a lot of crap being pushed about fad diets and challenges and there's no magic pill. There's you liking your food, moving your body and fighting for your health and your life. And that's what we're doing here. So if you want to know what we did and what we ate to lose our first and next 50 pounds, we have two weight loss guides down below. The first and next 50 exact portions, exact meal plans, family friendly recipes. It's all there. It also gives you the first 50 also gives you a guideline on how to customize your own meal plan so that you can choose all the food that you like. And we have videos too. If you don't want to buy the books, watch these. They are honest, they are true, and they are here to help you guys. And this is not a diet. This is eating less and moving your body. This is a lifestyle change, guys. This is something that you can sustain. What is it? It's what Kyle said. Eating what you like and moving your body. That's what this is about. So we love you. This is why we make the videos. Now, we're gonna do the lawnmower, of course. <sighs> that was a kickstarter. Now you're gonna shake your beans. <laughs> oh, remember when they liked when I kicked the light last time? Now we're gonna kick it again. <sighs> Karate. Whoa. Winging around, shaking that thing. Like Whoa. Shoot. Can't show that on YouTube. Show this. Hi. <laughs> Woo! Bye guys, love you, peace. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.